mechanics has been used in mining for, for hundreds of years. It wasn't formalized until after the Second World War. Early applications involved ground support, roof, bolts in the roof of an underground mine. They didn't understand why they worked, and so they worked out some of the mathematics for it. It was used primarily in the, the coal mines in England in the early days, but it spread in parallel with the tunneling industry um, in France and in, in the rest of Europe as well as in the United States. It entered into mining in a big way when a lot of the gold mining was done in South Africa in the uh, 1950s where the stresses were so high that they needed to understand how could they mine in these areas without having safety problems with the workers. And a little after that, it spread into North America mining where we did a lot of thin vein mining and it was very dangerous in the thin veins. Um, so we had to figure out how, ways to keep it open which were still economical and at the same time there were advances in rock mechanics in Australia so the the rock mechanics discipline grew up primarily after the Second World War and today it's evolved into discipline at the universities for example in in almost every mining country around the world Rock mechanics is considered in the mining to be a balance between is it economical to mine this rock at the same time is it safe to be able to mine it. For many years in the, in the early years of mining, modern day mining, safety was an issue because many men were killed underground. Many men were killed in the open pit operations. But today, there is this balance between can we make money doing it safely? And so with that, the mining industry has developed ways of looking at safety being an integral part of the cost of doing mining. So we're here today to put on a short course for teaching how the rock mechanics, the technical side of rock mechanics connects to the operational side of mining. We're gonna cover how do I optimize my pit or my underground mining so that it's economic. And with that, how do I balance the risks that occur in doing that mining? and that the, there are trade-offs between increasing risks will actually cost you more money because of a slope failure, for example, in a pit wall will cost you millions of dollars to move that material to get to the next piece of ore that was just buried or that losing a life will cost you um, not only in insurance money, but in lawsuits and legal problems. And so we can't just kill people. We have to balance that risk of being injured against the cost to produce more ore. We're talking through how we collect data that allows us to assess those risks. We're teaching information on how do we monitor whether this this risk is actually present or not. So the course brings all of this back to the, the fundamentals of how do I optimize the design of the mine given the rock mechanics that we have to experience when we actually mine the rock. So when, when we do rock mechanics, it's not very expensive. And, and this is an idea that we try to keep teaching to the mine operators, you drill one hole, it will cost you many thousands of dollars. 
But to do the rock mechanics that comes out of that same hole is an engineer's time, which is a few hours. And so the cost of, of collecting that data is small compared to the cost of collecting all of the, the, the exploration data that comes with that hole. The, da the, the, the cost implications can be huge. If I can steepen the slope of the pit a little bit, that may have a big financial difference or cost difference for the mining. So the rock mechanics, though it's not a large portion of the expenses for a mine, it can have a significant impact on reducing the amount of money that a mine has to spend to keep it operational. In Mexico, we find that rock mechanics sometimes can be an afterthought. After the pit slope begins to fail, they say, oh, we have a rock mechanics problem. Although the people understand rocks because they mine it every day, it's not the same as predicting how the rock will behave when we mine it in the future, tomorrow. One of the things we're seeing in Mexico, especially this year with more rain, we see more pit failures because we have not done as much as we could to look at the interaction of groundwater and the water as it affects the stability of the pits. That has resulted in additional effort here in Mexico to restabilize those pits. Um, in Mexico, there is not a rock mechanics certification or, or degree that you get at the university. It's an add-on at the end. So most mining engineers get exposed to it at the university level but you don't have one individual who is a geotechnical engineer specifically trained in mining operations. And, and that's part of what this course is doing, is to bring that level up for a few individuals who specialize in geotechnical with respect to mining rock mechanics.